What would happen if the sun suddenly burned out? The sun, our star of origin, sustains life on Earth. We are fortunate that the Earth's size and distance from the sun are ideal for supporting life. The Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field also protect it from dangerous cosmic radiation. A huge revolving cloud of gas and dust known as a solar nebula served as the basis for the formation of the sun and the rest of the solar system. The nebula started spinning faster and eventually flattened into a disk as it collapsed under the weight of its intense gravity. The majority of the material was drawn toward the center, where it first became a protostar and subsequently our sun, which makes up around 99.8% of the solar system's mass. Before going on, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can watch more videos in the future. About 4.5 billion years ago, this process started and it is thought to have taken about 50 million years for the pressure and temperature to rise to the point where hydrogen and helium started to combine to generate heavier elements. The planets in our solar system were created from the cosmic debris that was still there. As they say, the rest is history. In terms of stars, the sun is rather mediocre. It isn't so big that it blazed brightly and swiftly used up all of its star fuel before exploding as a supernova. It is not as tiny and dim as a red dwarf. To be fair, these can endure stability for more than a trillion years, making them some of the last stars to escape the universe's inevitable heat death. Good night sun, good night moon. It is estimated that the sun has approximately 5 billion years left until it runs out of fuel and will be around halfway through its lifespan at this point. The events that are taking place deep within the sun's core are not only fascinating, but also essential to comprehending how the sun will ultimately expire. It is estimated that the center of the sun has a temperature of approximately 15 million degrees Celsius, 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, making it both hot and dense enough to support the process of thermonuclear fusion. It is packed to the brim with hydrogen nuclei, all of which are engaged in violent collisions with one another. In the process of doing so, the energy that is produced in the core is sufficient to enable the nuclei to combine and form helium. A tremendous quantity of energy is liberated as a result of this process. The energy that is generated in the core is what provides the sun with its power and is responsible for the production of its heat, light, and radiation. This energy is also an essential component in maintaining the equilibrium between the sun and the powerful gravitational force that is exerted within the sun's interior. Because there won't be enough energy to fight gravity forever, the sun will eventually get smaller, which will cause the core to experience an increase in both pressure and temperature. The accumulation of helium in the core will eventually cause an increase in the temperature of the fusion reactions. This will be done in an effort to offset the ever-increasing density, which marks the beginning of the end. Because of this additional energy, the sun will first become brighter, and then its outer layers will inflate out. As a result, the sun's atmosphere would enlarge to around 200 times its current size, generating a red giant and putting it directly in the path of Earth's orbit, Mercury and Venus. A sun that is significantly hotter will extinguish all life on Earth, but it may make it possible for regions of the solar system that are currently inhospitable to become habitable. In addition, the sun will expel its gas into space, which will result in the formation of a planetary nebula. The core of a red giant star is contracting even as its outer layers are expanding into a vast cloud as the star evolves into a red giant. When this happens, the temperature and pressure in the sun's core will be 10 times higher than they are right now. After the sun has been removed from the main sequence for approximately 1.2 billion years, the center of the helium core will reach temperatures and densities high enough to cause it to ignite and burn, which will result in the formation of a white dwarf. This white dwarf star will be approximately the same size as Earth, but it will have only half the mass of the Sun. Electron Degeneracy Pressure They go through a process similar to that of neutron stars, but instead of nuclear degeneracy pressure driving the existence of the object, white dwarfs are electron degenerate. This is a state in which all of the electrons surrounding the atomic nucleus are forced into the lowest energy quantum state. White dwarfs are extremely interesting objects in and of themselves. This indicates that instead of fusion counteracting the stresses of gravity to keep the sun from collapsing under its own weight, albeit it is not quite heavy enough to form a neutron star or black hole, electron degeneracy pressure protects the white dwarf from collapsing further.
This is because the sun is not quite heavy enough to form a black hole or a neutron star. The gases that were expelled into space from the sun's outermost layers will, over the next few tens of thousands of years, orbit the white dwarf. A beautiful emission nebula will be produced as a result of the tiny dense object's emission of a large amount of UV radiation, which will ionize the surrounding gases, causing them to glow brightly. It's possible that the nebula that was left behind is most similar to the Helix Nebula, which looks like a huge eye floating about in space. What's next? Even before the sun expands into a red giant, astronomers are unsure if Earth will survive the sun getting brighter. According to some predictions, the sun will be 10% brighter than it is currently in about 1 billion years. Additionally, a rise in heat energy will result from this, resulting in a runaway greenhouse effect like Venus. The fate of the Earth once the sun turns into a red giant remains unknown to scientists. However, even if the Earth managed to avoid being completely eaten, life would be utterly unsurvivable due to the red giant sun's extreme heat. The chance exists that planets like Mars and moons like Titan and Europa will fall out and possibly become livable, even if this is unquestionably bad for Earth. As the energy from the dying sun cranks up temperatures to a point where they may be comparable to Earth's present temps, astronomers think regions in the furthest reaches of our solar system, like Pluto or other objects in the Kuiper Belt, may become warm oases. It is believed that significant amounts of water ice may exist beneath the surface of several of these locations. They may even include sophisticated organic compounds. In a 2003 publication, astronomers predicted that Pluto would create its own atmosphere, which is essential for life when the sun dies. Technically, worlds between 10 and 50 AU could become livable for the first time. 1 AU is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. What will happen when the Sun suddenly burned out? When the Sun is a red giant, the ice worlds of our solar system will melt and become ocean oases for tens to several hundreds of millions of years, says S. Alan Stern, the director of the Department of Space Studies at the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado, and the author of the study. Boulder is located in the state of Colorado. Since all of the frozen moons of the big planets and the icy dwarf planets of the Kuiper Belt will likewise carry oceans at that time, our solar system would then be home to hundreds of worlds with oceans on their surfaces, in contrast to the current situation in which just one such world exists. I prefer to term these worlds warm Plutos, in analogy to the multitude of hot Jupiters observed orbiting sun-like stars in recent years. This is because Pluto's temperature will not be substantially different then than Miami Beach's temperature is now. It is anticipated that the red giant phase may endure anywhere from a few thousand to a billion years. In the last stages of its life, the sun will undergo a number of changes that will cause it to become far more unstable and intensely brilliant. At times, it will pulse with 6,000 times more light and energy than it does at the present time. Pluto's orbit is exceedingly erratic, which may have a negative impact on the planet's potential habitability in the future. We are fortunate in that we have a lot of time to formulate a strategy for leaving Earth before the Sun completely dies out. That's a wrap for today's video. What are your thoughts on our list? Let us know in the comment section below. And make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more future videos.